Today we're going to talk about the endocrine system. Hi, I'm Larry Johnson. I am a professor from Texas A&M University. And today we're going to talk about the diversity of organs in the endocrine system. This is part one. Here we can see uh, the endocrine system components. Uh, uh, the pituitary is at the top. Uh, lower left is the pituitary. You can see some of the cells that are located therein. The adrenal is in the middle. And the far right, we have the thyroid gland. So there's a diversity of different types of organs, and those have functions. And that's what we're supposed to do today, is to gain a greater appreciation, a greater appreciation for the diversity of functions of the endocrine system, and to recognize the different organs and unique features of organs and cells that make up the endocrine system. If this information is useful to you, please share it with your colleagues. Thank you. The endocrine system. Hi, I'm Larry Johnson, a professor at Texas A&M University, and this is endocrine system part two. We want to cover the adrenal, uh, pancreas, uh, and tell a little bit about experimentation where we're transplanting testes into the ears of rats to look at Sertoli cell uh, numbers and, and control. If we go back to the pituitary, remember we had uh, uh, the pars distalis, the pars nervosa, and the pars intermedia. Uh, here again, we can see the pars intermedia here, here, and here. This is pars intermedia. Uh, Sometimes have this colloid in, in through there. Uh, and that one, that produces a hormone. This is melanocyte stimulating hormone, which is par, uh, produced by the pars intermedia. And here we see melanocytes, there's this nucleus right there and its projections. It's a dendritic cell that uh, projects out to uh, pass the melanin granules onto the keratinocytes, the main cells of skin. So this is the bottom of the epidermis that we can see. Now, uh, melanocytes usually distribute the melanin through the keratinocytes uh, equally, but if it's not equally, then that's what caused freckles to occur. Uh, but the point here is melanocyte stimulating hormone stimulates the melanocytes uh, to produce melanin granules. And so here we can see melanocytes, these clear cells uh, on the, on the stratum basal, and we can see the melanin granules uh, that has been passed on to these other cells, and you can see the capping where uh, the melanin granules are above the nucleus to protect the nucleus on the basal layer, which is a germinal layer, uh, to, from the sun. Here we can see the sun from NASA, uh, and so you pre prevent any U UV damage uh, to the cells that have the capability of, of dividing in the future. So this time we will look at the adrenal, and the adrenal is near the renal. It's what the adrenal stands for. Uh, and we can see, remember, from the pituitary, we have uh, three to cortical hormones coming down here, stimulating the cortex, uh, and you're getting control. Uh, negative feedback, uh, the cortisol produced here has a negative feedback to the anterior pituitary as well as a, a hypothalamus preventing releasing factors for uh, ACTH. Uh, and we look at the adrenal, we can see there are different layers in the cortex. Uh, and the medulla, so this is the cortex on the outside uh, and the medulla in the middle. So this is the cortex with a capsule up through there and the medulla in through there. There's different layers. You have the stratum uh, glomerulosa, looks kind of like a glomerulus, a stratum fasciculata, uh, a stratum reticularis, uh, and then finally you've got the, the, the medulla, the cells of the medulla. So you can see these different layers here, uh, and the medulla, the chromophon cells have a funny type of staining to them. Cortex, medulla is what we have. Again, we've got the cortex, and then uh, the medulla, uh, the, uh, of course, you have cortisol uh, that's being produced by the adrenals, uh, and uh, here we can see the mineral corticoids are produced. Aldosterone is produced, regulating the kidney function, uh, and uh, glucocorticoids, cortisol, which produce, and even antigens 
are produced. So these different layers produce the different hormones, and we can see those. So these are uh, the hormone uh, that stimulates them, ACTH stimulates the, uh, the cortex uh, to produce aldosterone, to produce cortisol, uh, to produce androgens, and uh, glucocorticoids and androgens being produced by zona uh, reticularis. So this is ACTH, uh, adrenal cortical, uh, di uh, diretropic hormone, uh, to cause them to, uh, tropic hormone, uh, to cause them to produce it. And here we can see again uh, the effect of age. Adrenal is small but, uh, at birth, but then later on it advances as we're needing uh, these uh, uh, these levels to produce the hormones uh, for the various adult function. So uh, you have a capsule with your density regular connective tissue and then you have the cells of the zona glomerulosa and it looks kind of like a glomerulus in the here. Then you have the zona fasciculata uh, where you have these look like little vesicles inside there and then the reticularis. Uh, you don't have so many vesicles and before you reach the medulla and then the medulla here where you have the chromophon cells. So here we can see that uh, in these cells that we have there that secretes uh, um, steroid uh, hormones, uh, then we have a lot of smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Some rough ER and also the mitochondria are different. They don't have lamellar Christi, they have a tuber type Christi. In such that the Christi look very similar to the smooth ER. So this is mitochondrion, two membranes that we have here, uh, and tuber type Christi. Here we can see the tuber type Christi of the mitochondrion through there. And you can, uh, in adrenal, you can get accumulation of lipofusin. Uh, this is undigested um, products uh, of the cell, maybe uh, self-digestion of organelles inside there, uh, but it does accumulate this lipofusin. And here we see the higher brain centers, uh, which uh, act on uh, the hypothalamus, which uh, affects the pituitary uh, to cause ACTH uh, to, uh, to stimulate the cortex. Cortisol has a peripheral effects, also cortisol feeds back on these different layers. Even the limbus system, the limbus system uh, is in a deep brain structures, uh, common in mammals involved in smelling, emotion, uh, motivation, behavior, and these things, and they influence uh, ACTH through their influence of the hypothalamus and the pituitary and the ACTH. So if we look at uh, the uh, adrenal function and blood pressure regulation, uh, you can see the kidney produces renin, and the renin causes out, uh, angiotensin 1, to go to angiotensin 2, uh, and then uh, that causes the adrenal medulla, the adrenal cortex, the adrenal cortex uh, to secrete aldosterone, and this is the glomerulosa. And so that stimulates the distal tubule of the kidney to reabsorb sodium and water, and this increases the uh, extravascular fluid, and that increases blood pressure. So this is a slow but sustained effect on uh, increase in blood pressure. Now, in contrast, a quick effect of blood pressure is by the vasoconstriction of angiotensin II. So, as the renin comes in through here and produces angiotensin II, which causes vasoconstriction. So, this is a quick way, uh, but uh, through the adrenal is a more sustained way. So, uh, aldosterone secreted uh, stimulates uh, sodium reabsorption in the distal tubule uh, we mentioned also in the gastromucosa, that's in the stomach, or the salivary glands, uh, uh, which uh, uh, the salivary glands pump the sodium out uh, to uh, produce a hypotonic solution, and then sweat glands. So where you deal with salt, uh, uh, those cells, uh, there are cells in those organs that facilitate uh, uh, sodium reabsorption uh, when aldosterone there. Cortisol is an anti-inflammatory effect. So if you have a swelling with a B or something, put the cortisol on it, it causes it to go down. It stimulates lysosomal membranes, prevent the cell 
dying in the case of uh, stabilizing membranes, uh, uh, causes uh, uh, atrophy of lymphoidal tissue. Uh, and so you don't want to take cortisol if you have some kind of immune disease, uh, for example, or exposed are going to be exposed to, uh, to things. Then decrease the uh, number of circulating lymphocytes. So these have a dampening effect on the immune system. Now we talk about release of neurons where uh, the neurons uh, synapse with particular cells and that's what happens in the adrenal medulla. In contrast, the indirect way is the endocrine system by which uh, you have nerve cells uh, dumping in the, in the hypothalamus which goes to the pituitary, ACTH gets to the bloodstream and comes and causes cortisol. So this is indirect versus direct ways and both of those are present uh, uh, in the, uh, in the, in the uh, adrenal. And so uh, as we said again, uh, the different uh, portions of hormones that are produced and in the case in the medulla, uh, epinephrine and norepinephrine is produced. So whenever we're riding uh, these uh, roller coasters, it feels like we're going to fall and we cause uh, epinephrine to be released and those effects on the body, even though uh, largely you are safe in a roller coaster. So there's different hormones that are produced um, uh, in the medulla and in the cortex, uh, which are involved uh, in various uh, physiologic functions that to occur. And in the medulla, you get epinephrine, uh, which affects skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle, uh, and metabolizing of cortisol and fats. So in the medulla, we can see the grains are stored inside. So this is the cortex, capsule, cortex, and medulla with a central vein for things to go out. And this is the chromophore cells in the medulla. The central vein is where fluid comes out. So blood comes in through there circulates through these sinuses and then ultimately exits uh, the central vein. So here again we can see where blood comes in, percolates down through there and ultimately goes out uh, in the medulla, the central vein which is covered, surrounded by the chromophore cells. Again we can see the cortex and medulla, uh, the cortex with the different zones that occur. We can see these cords, sinuses in between these cords uh, which facilitates uh, exchange between blood uh, and the uh, blood and the cells of it to stimulate these cells or, or uh, ACTH for example or uh, to carry the hormones away from these cells cortisol or whatever so these are uh, sinuses chromophore cells these guys um, you actually have nerve uh, cells that synapse on these uh, to cause them to secrete their epinephrine. A lot of smooth endoplasmic reticulum, uh, of course, that are in these. So the blood supply, as we can see, comes in through there. Some blood percolates down through the medulla, uh, through the cortex, going to the medulla. Other, you have uh, oxygenated blood, and that brings oxygenated blood in through there. It didn't percolate down through there. The first capillary network that, that's in there is going to remove the oxygen from the um, from the blood, so you've got to bring oxygen in by having an arteriole that comes all the way down in through there. So it percolates from the cortex to the medulla and to the central vein and then finally gets out. So this is the cortex with the capsule uh, on the outside. And what we see here, these, th these here are the sinuses, the blood sinuses where uh, the blood is percolating down through there. We can see it again, the uh, blood's coming down. Uh, through there and it's going to exit in the central vein. So it comes on down through there, goes through the medulla, and goes out the, the central central vein that we can see there. Again, you get these sinusoids in through there, the fenestrated uh, sinusoid to facilitate a maximum exchange of hormones that are in there. Now, the endocrine system can store the, uh, the hormones in granules, and that's what you do in the medulla. Uh, or it can store it extracellularly, uh, and that's what you do in the follicles of the thyroid. Or uh, you could uh, have no storage at all. If it's steroid, it can walk right through a membrane, and of course that's what 
happens. So you can't store the hormone if you can't stop it with a membrane. Another endocrine system is the pancreas, uh, and that is the islet salonohan. And here we can see the different cells. You have alpha cells and beta cells in the islets of Lonerhan, and this is the exocrine function and the endocrine function uh, of the pancreas. These have the different cells and beta cells produce insulin and, reg and it regulates glucose intake of cells. Um, uh, the alpha cells produce glucagon, which inhibits intake. Uh, so you have these counteract one another, their hormones, insulin versus glucagon, and somatostatins produced by the delta cells. So you see these, this is the islet salonohan, and they're distributed throughout, as we'll see in a minute. There's islet salonohan, really pale cells. These are the ones that are producing the endocrine component uh, of the pancreas. Uh, and like these other guys, are producing exocrine. These are pancreatic astrocells. So again, we have the islets, and the pancreatic astral cells with these uh, a, a big granules to be discharged. You can see the granules again. <coughs> and so this is the islet salonohan, and this is the pancreatic uh, astral cells. Now, uh, in the pancreas, uh, we have a portal system. Uh, uh, remember, you can have a portal system by you have two sets of capillaries with a portal vessel in between. Normally, you only have one set of capillaries. But you can have two. There's, there's two in the endocrine system. One uh, portal system is a hepatic, is in the hypothalamus pituitary, and that is a venous portal system. Uh, and the first capillary network modifies it, produces releasing factors which get into the bloodstream, and it carries them directly to the parts of stalus, uh, uh, to for the second capillary network uh, to. Um, uh, to stimulate uh, these cells to produce uh, their various hormones, acetophils or basophils. So the first capillary network modifies the blood and the second capillary network benefits from that modification. And in between there you have a portal vessel. In this case, it's a, a venule. So again, uh, the venous uh, plexus that, that we see there uh, that is coming down in the pars distalis. First capillary network is in the is in the hypothalamus, second one uh, is in the parsistalis. So here we can see the different cells, the beta cells, uh, the alpha cells, and the capillaries and the pancreatic astral cells. First capillary network is in the islets of Langerhans, um, and then you have a, a arterial portal system, you have arterial that then goes to the second capillary network uh, that stimulates or inhibits uh, these cells, depending upon if you have insulin or glucagon. So again, you can see the first capillary network is the islet salonohan. Second capillary network uh, is uh, the uh, blood vessels and the connective tissue around the pancreatic astral cells. So this arterial portal system, and that's why you have uh, the islet salonohan distributed throughout because of the little local portal system uh, for each each one of these. So uh, these are arterial uh, portal systems that connect uh, the isolation with the local cells around each one of those. So uh, the endocrine uh, system, remember, is ductless. So you don't have ducts. So uh, blood is, is carried by the blood. So it's dumped in the connective tissue around the capillaries, and then it, then it goes inside there, and then it goes to the portal vessel to the endocrine part. Sorry, the endocrine part goes to the exocrine part. This is the one that does have ducts. The exocrine has ducts. And we can see uh, the islet uh, salonohan that we can see there. Uh, and um, the alpha cells, as a rule, are more uh, toward the center. And you can see the, 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 sorry, the beta cells are more toward the center. The alpha cells are more toward the outside. Then we have a pineal gland. Uh, remember, uh, here's a pineal gland, there's a pituitary right here, right back there's a pineal gland, and that has to do with your light, dark rhythm, uh, your circadian rhythm, uh, and uh, is, uh, is produced uh, a hormone uh, that's associated 
uh, with that. Uh, here we're seeing that hormones melatonin. And here we can see the activity of the reproductive tract corresponding to uh, the different uh, phases, and you can see the size of a testis varies with it. During the dark time when the hamster should be sleeping, his testes is much smaller than they are whenever they're active, and this is regulated uh, by melatonin. Uh, you can also regulate it by uh, a daylight that you have uh, in there. So here we see the, uh, uh, the cells of the pineal gland uh, as well as the um, brain sand that we can see here. These are uh, uh, really rigid uh, precipitants that are located in through there and there's connective tissue around it. Another organ uh, is the testis and here we can see the, the seminar tubules that produce uh, the sperm uh, and then here we can see the Leydig cells. The Leydig cells in through there that produce testosterone and then we can see the blood vessels uh, between the two. Uh, you have Leydig cells distributed throughout the testis because it helps maintain a high concentration of testosterone in the vicinity of the developing cells. So these are Leydig cells, these are germ cells producing some different tubules. Leydig cells have the abundance of smooth and plasma reticulum because they produce uh, testosterone uh, and also the, the mitochondria are tubular uh, Christi. A tubular Christi, mitochondria, lots of smooth and a pleasure to come. Another organ in the female is the ovary, and the ovary produces estrogen uh, that we can see there, uh, and uh, that is responsive to uh, the pituitary. Uh, if the pituitary hormone is stimulating it, uh, it, um, the, the ovary produces estrogen versus progesterone to maintain pregnancy. So it produces a different hormone depending upon what um, uh, phase of the cycle on it. But the follicles produce estrogen and they're responsible for uh, domestic animals uh, standing heat, uh, for example, to be, uh, to be bred by the, uh, um, the female's receptor. This is a corpus luteum once a follicle has been removed, ovulated, uh, these uh, same cells are modified, the so-called luteinized, by luteinizing hormone, uh, and then they produce progesterone to maintain pregnancy. So here we can see uh, uh, these are uh, these are corpus luteum cells uh, that has a tuber type uh, Christi. Um, uh, and you can see them right in through there. There are also calcium deposits in mitochondria as well, and lots of smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So in summary, the function of the endocrine system uh, is a system that produces hormones that is carried in the blood, so it's an indirect uh, connectivity between cells located one place and another one, and their uh, cells are responsive to, um, to those hormones uh, in a unique way in that they have receptors for certain hormones but not receptors for uh, other uh, other hormones and part of the regulations is regulating the amount of receptors uh, that a cell uh, can have so it does a lot of things your mood um, uh, uh, sexual function reproduction and development growth and so here we can see uh, there's a host of hormones uh, where what's the source of them, target cells, uh, and the actions. Likewise, other hormones are produced. So there's a nine hormones produced by the pituitary. Uh, melatonin is produced by the pineal, as we mentioned to you. Thyroglobulin is produced by cells of a thyroid, and that's broken down to T3 and T4. Calcitonin is produced by the periflicker cells glucagon by alpha cells, insulin by beta cells. And remember we were talking about the first experiment conducted was uh, by transplanting testes uh, into the abdominal cavity of castrated roosters. If you castrate a rooster, his comb and wattle growth looks like a hen. Uh, but if you have testosterone inside that rooster uh, by the testes you're transplanted into there, 
then it would help maintain secondary sex characteristics to first study. And here's a study where we were putting testes into rat, uh, rat's ears to look at Sertoli cell populations. So that's what we're going to do is talk about the different things. And this is a little presentation I gave in France a while back. But since I was talking in English and not in French, I felt like this horse who found himself in a trough uh, by, I felt, uh, out of control or not in total control uh, because I wasn't speaking French. Now, I don't think our experiment is so crazy because a lot of people, John Hunter was the first one to describe uh, intercon system in transplanted testes, uh, but uh, uh, Berthold actually wrote it up. John Hunter did it, uh, but told, told the world about it. Others have transplanted testes included uh, in patients and also six doctors to receive uh, transplants. Here we can see transplanted different species at different times. Uh, and so uh, transplanted testes has been uh, a normal pursuit uh, of, of uh, figuring out how uh, uh, things are working in the testis. And so uh, if you look at the number of Sertoli cells, which are nurse cells in a horse, you can see it relates to sperm production rates, a pretty good uh, R value there, R square value. Uh, in humans, a little less so, but still, uh, it's still a, relation, a significant relationship. So if you got more Sertoli cells, you get higher sperm production rates. And so we want to do a study with rats uh, where uh, you could uh, look at controlling Sertoli cell populations by giving it hormones or maybe the numbers of testes you're transplanting. And so if you look at an intact rat, Sertoli cell numbers increase till day 20 and then it levels off. Uh, you can't remove the pituitary. A classical intercon study is to remove the organ and give replacement therapy. You can't remove the pituitary until about day 18. And so by the time you can remove the pituitary, <coughs> the growth phase for the Sertoli cell is, is stopped. And so in order to put the growth phase in a rat that can be hypothesectomized, you had to get the immature testis at this time and transplant it into an animal that's hypothesectomized that's older. That's why we transplanted them, is to make a model that didn't exist in nature. So that's what we try to do. So here you can see where we made a little hole, uh, let, let the air uh, come out in through there, put the little testes in there, and here you can see the testes grew. So when we looked at, at these, we see the, uh, this is the testis weight, versus the, uh, the the treatment. This is the intact rat, and you can see the little testes in the ears did not match that of the intact rat. So these are the number of Sertoli cells per testis. Uh, this is in the intact rat, uh, and then this is uh, in the uh, transplanted testes. So uh, the growth phase with the leveling off was uh, duplicated in these transplanted uh, testes. Uh, but there was a delay, a delay uh, in the onset uh, of that. So uh, the, uh, here we had about uh, 24 million uh, times two would be 48 million. So we're looking for 48 million. Uh, if you look at the histology of these, you can see there's uh, lady cells, or totally cells only in some cases, but there were germ cells even uh, the rat sperm has a sickle shape in through here, uh, and you can see that there were some intact ones. If we look at molecular biology, you can see the transplanted testes uh, had the same uh, uh, the same uh, molecules of DNA uh, that uh, was uh, uh, that was in the intact animals. If you look at a uh, single vesicle weight or the uh, prostate weight. Uh, these were the intact animals and these were our transplants uh, and those uh, organs were maintained by the little transplanted testes and castrated, uh, castrated uh, 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 rats. 
And so uh, here you can see this is a serum level. Basically, this is intact. Serum a little bit high for the gonadotrophins that basically thought they were a castrate. If you look at the testis weight and the number of Sertoli cells in the intact animal, and the when they remove the pituitary, you can see uh, that there was a difference. You remove the pituitary, you reduce the number of of uh, Sertoli cells. So here we can see. Uh, uh, testes that were transplanted in the rat. Uh, you received male uh, and female, and it didn't matter if you transplanted them in a male or female host, um, uh, they equally uh, were uh, Satoy cell numbers uh, were a little bit higher in the male than they were in the female. Uh, and here we can see uh, the hair coat was a little bit more rough if the animals had a testes in them, this is a typical uh, rat. So since you're putting testes from one rat and another, didn't have to put the same number. Here we put four in. And so remember, we're looking for 40, uh, 48. If we look at two or four testes, you can see that we still didn't get 48. However, if you put more, uh, this is Satoy cell numbers uh, in the animals, this is 48. If you put six testes in the animal, you did exceed to 48. If you put eight in there, uh, you greatly exceeded to 48. Interesting enough is the number of test, number of Sertoli cells per testis was the same. So the regulation on number was due to, was uh, some regulation within the testis itself and not the animal uh, itself. So finally, we looked at the hormone levels and this is the number of Sertoli cells per testis. Uh, and uh, this is uh, media, which is a negative control, or the pituitary intact. All these animals were hypophysectomized. This one was pituitary intact. Uh, and so we ask, are these treatments similar to the negative control or the positive control? And here you can see the FSH and LH levels were higher uh, as high as the pituitary intact. And the uh, LH and growth hormone by itself was not sufficient uh, to maintain, and, and FSH was intermediate. So uh, we see the FSH with LH was the best combination uh, to more mimic uh, the positive control. Since you're taking testes from one animal and putting in another one, you don't have to put them in the same age. This is the young rat, and this is the old rat. And when we compared that, this old rat, the testes were no good in this older individual, but if you transplant new testes in there, uh, they would grow. So we looked at physiologic levels of different things, really minute uh, in steroid and, and especially peptide uh, hormones, and you can see the effect of the endocrine system on itself. Here's estrogen and testosterone. They look very similar, but what a difference uh, that that it makes. Here's uh, Jefferson Memorial in Washington, D.C. The White House, the White House, Flat Stanley went with me to the White House. This is a Lee's house. Many of the illustrations produced uh, in this uh, PowerPoint is associated with uh, books uh, that are the original source of those. We thank those books, thank Body World for their images, uh, and we want to give the credit to the original source, which is these books. Thank you.